hear a part like this. You know, it says in the in, in the parsha, uh, says Ria Mitzara. So the the the, the, the parsha is all about saras and you know different tumas and things like this. So it says in the pasuk that if a person becomes a mitzora, right, they have saras on their skin or whatnot. So there's a whole procedure, right? So they have to be uh, isolated and uh, quarantined, and eventually, eventually, when the kain sees that the tzaras is is diminishing and you know the person's on the path of becoming better. So in Mela, there's a whole process of, of his tahari, to bring karbonus, and he has to go to the mikvah. It's a whole it's a whole process. So it says like this: the pasuk says that when after the mitzvah is quarantined uh, for seven days or, or more than that, if necessary. So it says v'hu when it's beginning to uh, to get smaller and he can become tahar v'hu he should be brought to the kain. <clears throat> So the Mepharshim asks the, the, the question is as follows. The Pasik begins again, the tar, the, the, the Mitzar is becoming Tahar, Vuvalakan, he should be brought to the Kain. And then Mam, Mamish, like the next Pasik is, and the Kain goes Michutzlamachna to go see, to investigate whether it's Taka true that the Tsaras has become diminished, and if he sees that it, that a Taka is getting smaller, then he prescribes certain carbonus from to bring. So the question the Mepharshim asks is the obvious question. Which one is it? Does he go to the Kain? That the Pasuk first starts off, that he is brought to the Kayin, and literally the next words are, and the Kayin goes to go investigate. So which one is it? Is he going out, or is the Kayin going to him? Now the truth is, in Halacha, it's certainly true that the Kayin has to go to him, because the Mitzvah is not allowed to go into the Machna, into, into the, the, the Jewish camp, until he's Tahar. So if the Kayin is going to investigate whether he's able to start the Tahar process, then certainly the Kayin has to go to him. So the real question is, what does it mean when the Pasuk says that he's brought to the kind of the kind? So the Zara says the following thing. It's one of these, like, like it's, it's a one line and it doesn't make much, uh, needs a lot of explanation. The Zara says, the kind, that he's brought to the kind, similar to how it says, the es badav, regarding the Aram, right, in Parshas Truma. So it says, you have to make the Aram of gold in different dimensions. And it says, the is you have to have the, the, the poles, right, for the Aram to carry it. It says in Pasuk, V'huvah's badav, that you should put the poles into the, you know, the rings for the aron. L'yosem men, the, the badav, the poles should not be removed, can't be removed. It says the Zayar, just as the Pasuk says, V'huvah's badav, that the poles should be brought to the aron, that they should be put into the aron. So to over here it says, V'huvah l'kayin. So the, so the Mitzorah, somehow, so the Zayar, is another, the Zayar is making a connection over here, that the Mitzorah's Tahara process is somehow related and similar to the, to the staffs of the Aran being placed in the Aran itself. What in the world was one or the other? All right, so there's a term from the Ishbitzer. It's part of a longer discussion, but for our purposes, it's like this. In, in, in the Ishbitzer's Svarim and Barat Tzadik, we find that the whole story of the Mitzara is very reminiscent, and, and the, the, his, the Avera that brought Zaras and his punishment, the consequences, the whole Misa with, with the Mitzorah is very reminiscent, very similar to what happened with other Mishan. For example, the Mitzorah speaks Lashon Har, right? That's what Lashon Har brings Tzaraz. That's exactly what happened with Adman Chav. The Anachash said Lashon Har about Hashem, right? That he said, oh, you know, they're Bani he doesn't want to eat from that tree because he doesn't want competition. And Adman Chav heard that Lashon Har, they were Makabalit. So Lashon Har was that there, and Chazal even say that the Nachash was afflicted with Tzaraz after the whole Misa. So you see that the issue was Lashon Hara. And because of Lashon Hara, a decree of death was put on Adam and Chava. And Chazal say, Mitzorah is Chashev Ke'emes, as, as if he's died. The Adam and Chava were kicked out of Gan Eden. The, the Mitzorah is kicked out of Machni Yisrael. By the way, he's the only person, Mitzorah is the only person, the only Tumba, that gets kicked out of even the Jewish camp. Right? Let's say uh, you know, a person becomes Tommy by going to a funeral or, or touching a sharetz or whatever the case may be. So you can't, get, you can't be in the base of Medish itself, but you could still be uh, in Yushalayim, you could still be in, uh, you know, in Tveria, you could still be in Jewish, in, in, in walled cities, in Chashev cities, in Eretz Yisrael. A Mitzorah is the only Jew that is kicked out of the entire camp. Where Tzadik writes is he says that Eretz Yisrael is like Gan Eden. It's a certain level of Gan Eden. And, if, and just as Adam was kicked out of Gan Eden, the Mitzorah is kicked out of Eretz Yisrael. So you have this, this relationship. What, so what's the pshat? Like, what's the, what's the Indian over here? So, you know, the first mimer that the Lubavitcher Rebbe said, you know, uh, when he became Rebbe, started off as Basi Lagani. And in that mimer, the Rebbe talks about this. He says that there are two different ways 
to look at life. There's two different ways to look at the world. There's certainly, there's certainly a lot to be done, right? There's a lot of things that are not, the world is not perfect, right? Life is not perfect, and things need to be repaired. There's a lot of repair that needs, that needs to be done. But the Rebbe said, there's two different ways to look at it. One way to look at life is that everything is broken to its core. It's like, you get down to the kishkas of everything, it's mamish broken. It's mamish broken. It's like the Pasuk says, when, when, uh, when the Roman, when the, when the Goyim were destroying the Vesem Mikdash and they were plowing over the Harabais, it says, Aru, Aru, Ad Ha that they said, let's, let's break it and, and, and like turn it all over until it's very foundations. That's one way of looking at life, where the things, the, the, again, you look at, you, you know, you go through life and things are messed up. You got to stare, you fix yourself, fix the world around you. And one perspective is, and what is broken? Everything. <laughs> Everything is broken all the way to its core. That's one way. And this is the way that the Mitzorah looks at life. See, the Mitzorah gets a bad rap. The Mitzorah looks like he's just a negative guy, just pessimistic, negative, someone that speaks Lush and hard, just a nasty person. The Mitzorah is not such a nasty person, you know? The Mitzorah is described with the word Adam. Adam kiyeb ar basaro. Adam is a description of someone, the Zar says that an Adam, that term Adam is used for a chash of a person. It's not, a, it's not a term that we just throw away haphazardly in Tanakh. So the, so the Mitzorah is someone that takes life extremely seriously, that, that is focused on trying to fix the world, fix himself and the world around him. So said the Israelites, so why is he so angry? Was he so frustrated by it? Well, the answer is because the Mitzorah looks at life as if everything is broken to its very core. And there's a deep frustration that the Mitzorah feels in his efforts in trying to fix himself and better himself, efforts that he tries to go and, and better the world around him. Because in the back of his mind, he's thinking, this is, this is a waste of time because at the end of the day, everything is broken. And the, whatever I fix, invariably, around the next corner, there's going to be something even worse. And that, that's, a very, that's a very big frustration that he feels. And because of that, he becomes nasty, he becomes uh, uh, judgmental, becomes uh, um, negative. Because what he's really negative about is, is life itself. He's, never, he's negative about everything. Because he doesn't see, he doesn't see this world as Gan Eden. He sees this world as what? As a place that's completely broken, Ad HaYisoyibah, to the very foundations. And so even if I'm, it's, 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 so, so the Mitzvah is like frustrated with being a Yid. Because being a Yid means, you know, get your hands dirty, start fixing things. And the Mitzvah is frustrated because he's thinking to himself, I'm going to get my hands dirty to start fixing things. For what purpose? It's only a matter of time until whatever I build. It's like Pisa and Ramses, you know? I'll build something up, okay, but the foundations are messed up. The whole thing is going to collapse invariably soon anyway. So he's just, he, he's just in this, in this negative mind, uh, this mindset. Th therefore, in a certain sense, the Mitzvah kicked himself out of Gan Eden. He kicked himself out of Gan Eden. Like when Adam and Chava ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That was a choice that they made of looking at life as... as, as as, as, as good or evil. And everything in life is teetering in the balance. Is it going to be completely obliterated to, you know, fall over, you know, uh, into the depths of hell and needs me to, to lift it up? Everything, everything is broken from that perspective of the Yitzhadas Tavira. The Yitzhadas Tavira means that every single moment in life is mamish, uh, you know, uh, teetering uh, in the balance of, of, uh, of destruction. And therefore, in a certain sense, the Mitzorah, the, Mitzorah, the, 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 the mistake of the Mitzorah is the following thing. The Lavach Rebbe said this in, in that Mimer. He says that the, mitz, the, mistake, the mistake of the Mitzorah is to look at, look at his life and look at the world as if, as if it's not going to What is, what's the Tikkun? What's, what's the Mitzorah's, what should the Mitzorah do? What the Mitzorah has to realize is that, of course, it's true. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. But it's not oru oru adi yisoyed, but it's not broken, it's not, uh, it's not rotten to its core. The Mitzvah has to realize that even though it's true we were kicked out of Gan Eden, but underneath reality is Gan Eden. It's like that's how the Maimah begins, Basi Lagani, that Hashem says, I've come to my garden. And the Bible said, which garden is he talking about? Gan Eden from, uh, you know, 5,000 years ago? No, 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 Basi Lagani means right now. It means New York City. Basi Lagani, this is called Gan Eden. Yeah. Hashem is saying it's true that on the surface 
things are a little bit broken. And you have to work to fix things, your life, and v'chulu v'chulu. But underneath all of that, you should know underneath all of things is Mamash Ganeidah. Which means that while you're working on becoming a better person, and while you're working to organize your life and to organize the, the world around you, you should know you're not working against, uh, against the current, you know? Like the Mitzorah thinks that life itself is chaos, life itself is broken, and any effort that I do to put things together, I'm fighting against the natural order of things. The natural order of things is things are messed up, and I'm trying to fight against that, so I, I, I can't fight against the entire planet. I can't fight against the entire universe. But the, that's the mistake of the Mitzvah. What the Mitzvah has to realize is that's quite the opposite. Even though it's true things are a little bit, you know, di, you know disorderly right now, you know, in Gullahs. But in the, beneath the surface of things, there's a Ganadin there. And the opposite. It's natural for the world to be perfect. It's unnatural for things to be broken. And the Rabbani Shalom gives us the, the opportunity to try to, to try to, um, to try to bring out and discover the Gan Eden that's beneath the surface. And the efforts that we put in to better ourselves, is not, that's not something that's against our nature or against the nature of the world. It's quite the opposite. We are trying to bring out the inner perfection that already exists within ourselves and within the world around us. This is the meaning of the staffs of the Aaron being placed in the Aaron itself. And the Pasuk says very strongly, Lo Yusuf, and you cannot remove the sticks from the Aaron. What was the purpose of those sticks? That was to, in order to the Kahanim, they should be able to lift up the arm, right? To carry, to travel, to do something. I mean, the arm needs to get from point to point B. You pick it up and you, ca- and you carry it over, right? But what's amazing is, Chazal say, that the arm is nice as nice of. That even though it looked like that the Kahanim were the ones carrying the arm on their shoulders, and they were the ones moving it from point A to point B, the truth is, the truth is, and it looked like hard work, Right? It looked like they're mamish, like schwitzing and, 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 you know, bearing the load of the arn. The truth is, it was nice as nice of. The arn was going to point A to point B anyway. You're really there to hitch a ride with the arn. That's really what was going on. It looked like you were carrying it. The truth is, the arn was carrying you. So the, because what the, and this is what the Torah is trying to stress with the Mitzvah, is that the Mitzvah is making a mistake in thinking that he has this huge load to bear of mamish uh, fixing the world. The world is fixing itself. The RN is moving from point A to point B. And you have an opportunity to, to be part of that trip. But the lachats, the pressure, the feeling of like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do if I mess up and everything is broken? And, and, even, and how, uh, how could I not mess up? Everything is broken anyway. And things, the, the, you know, the whole weight of, of, of you know, the, everything is tilted towards destruction anyway. That whole pessimistic way of thinking, that's the opposite of what the RN is trying to say. The purpose of the, what the RN is trying to tell us is quite the opposite. Things are moving in the right direction. The Aaron is moving in the right direction. And even if the Torah says, carry the Aaron, it's not such a heavy burden. Because what you're doing is something that's natural. You're, doing, you're trying to, to, just to connect to that, that what's happening anyway. I mean, the Lashem talks about this. It's a very, very big sugi in his writings. That even though it looks like, to the outside, it looks like things might be getting worse. You read the Sadiris and, you know, all the craziness that goes on in life. It looks like things are getting worse. Which... Which is why the Mitzvah makes the mistake of thinking, Aru Aru Ari Yisai Ba, that to the very foundation of reality, everything's broken. Because he looks outside and he reads the paper and he's like, okay, you see, everything's almost crazy. And it's getting crazier as the day goes by. But the, the, the Nisai, that's the Nisai, that's his test. What the Mitzvah has to realize, the truth that the Mitzvah has to realize is that that's only what it looks like on the outside. On the inside, it's Basi Lagani. Underneath the surface is Mamish Gan Eden. And when Adam was kicked out of Gan Eden, he wasn't really kicked out of Gan Eden. He was, he, what happened at that moment is that Adam Rishon, you know, uh, you know, blinders came on his eyes. It was no longer to see Gan Eden uh, in, in the life that he lived. But that, his Nisayan is, ever since then, we're trying to get back to Gan Eden. But instead of trying to get back to that place, the idea is to realize that underneath the surface of where you are is a Gan Eden. And just realize that and understand that all the efforts that you're putting in to better yourself and to better the situation that you find yourself in, you're not working against, against the, the, the rules of nature. You're not working against the, 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 the uh, you're, not, you're not making anything new. You're not really picking up the iron and moving from point A to point B. The iron is moving anyway. It's moving in that direction. And it looks like you're bearing the load when really the truth is it's happening on its own. And you're just being mishtati. You're, you're, you're part of the ride. This is why... You know, that's, that's why even the rings, it's a, it's, a, it's a lot of, 
It's a big sugi about this, but even the rings of the aron, the tabas, right? Those rings that uh, was attached to the aron that you would put the, the the staff within. The word tabas comes to the word teva, which means nature itself, right? Because that's the, because this is the this is the fundamental, you know, sort of nisayan that the mitzora has to deal with. How do I look at nature? Do I look at nature as something that's sort of on its own, broken and miserable and very heavy to lift? Or no, are, are these tabais, are these rings attached to the arn itself? And the arn is carrying itself, plus the tabais, plus the, the rings, plus the staff, plus the condom that are carrying it. It's all being carried by the arn. And so this is the Nisayan for the, for the Mitzvah to realize this. This is why the word, you know, the, the Mitzvah is, is afflicted with the nega of tzeras, nega. Right, uh, Zara says that the word nega is a manipulation from the word einig. Right, einig means pleasure. Right, and the Sefer Yitzchir writes this. The Sefer Yitzchir writes, "Ein l'mala mi einig." There's nothing greater than einig. Ve'in l'mata mi nega. There's nothing lower. There's nothing worse than a nega. That's what the Sefer Yitzchir says. What does what does einig mean? Einig is a Rosh Hashanah Eden Nahar Gan. Eden Hargan. Like the Pusik says, there was a place of Eden, right? Eden. And out of Eden came a river. And, riv- and the river flowed from Eden into the Gan Eden. Eden Hargan means, what's the biggest Einig? The biggest Einig is to realize that where you are right now, the Mamash Gan Eden, <coughs> that that flow, that place of Eden Hargan, you're still there. The Neg of Tsaras is, 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 is making, is, is, is damaging that process, that flow of Eden Nahargan. That, that itself is the neg of Tzras. This is why, you know, Shabbos, for example, there's a mitzvah of oining Shabbos. Like, what's, what, what is Shabbos? Shabbos is, is a taste of Gan Eden, right? Shabbos is, Shabbos is not, you know, for example, when Adam and Chava sinned, so they sinned on Friday, right? But when were they kicked out of Gan Eden? Matzah Shabbos. In, Gan Eden, in Shabbos, they were able to stay in Gan Eden. Why? Because Shabbos is a bechin of Gan Eden. What does that mean? We all pick up and we move to Gan Eden for Shabbos. No, but the, the whole inner of Shabbos is that where you are, where you've been during the six days of the week, has been Gan Eden. Ah, you didn't look like it. It didn't feel like it. That was all on the surface of things. It looks like on the outside, the kahanam are schlepping the aren. That's what it looks like. But the pinimius, what does Shabbos say? Shabbos reveals, nice is nice of. The arm was carrying you the whole time. Life is actually getting better. And world, the world is getting better. Kal Yisrael is getting better. Everything's working towards Tikkun. Instead of thinking that everything is getting worse and worse and worse, which makes a person upset and miserable and judgmental and small-minded and rebellious. That's the, 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 the sight of Shabbos, the secret of Shabbos, is quite the opposite. Everything is einig. Everything is wonderful. Eden Hargan still exists. That's what Shabbos is. That's why, you know, there's a minig of, of, of uh, people do this, but it's actually a, a, a real minig. It's brought down that uh, the davening of Shabbos, there should be uh, singing, right? I mean, you see this, like in shul, right? There's more singing on Shabbos, obviously, during Shacharis or Musaf than during the week, right? But that's a real thing. Like, what's this idiom of singing? Because that's the difference between, you know, when, when, you're, when you're looking at life, it's the same, you know, it's the same sitter, you know what I'm saying? It's more or less the same words. But then there's a six days of the week how to daven Shacharis, yeah? And then there's a Shabbos way of daven Shacharis. The six days of the weekday way of daven Shacharis is what? is very much, it lends itself to Mitzvah, you know? Like, it's broken, it's hard, it's hard work, you have to schlep in the and it's hard. Shabbos way of davening is a what? It's easy, it's light. It's without lachatz, it's just, it goes. The, the Aaron is carrying you. That's the Shabbos takeaway. That's why the Mitzvah, by the way, when he, the process of the Mitzvah to become tar, he has to bring birds, right? He has to bring birds, which is unique. It's unique to people, to, to, the, to the Mitzvah itself, this whole process with the birds. The Zohar Kodesh says the reason why birds is because birds are, are singers. They're the singers of nature. They sing songs. Whereas the words of the Mitzvah, the Mitzvah's problem was with his speech. But instead of singing beautiful songs of sweetness, the Mitzvah was mighty ra. He, he, he expressed with his mouth words of negativity. Words of, of that, that, were, that were coming from a place within himself that was not happy. It was coming from a place within himself that everything is broken and messed up. And, and uh, there is no, there is no, it's already so, there is no Gan Eden anymore. And so a person that lives in that way of Gan Eden is way in the past, then of course he's not going to sing. Of course he's not going to be happy. Of course everything he sees, he's going to be, he's going to see every cup is half empty. Of course. But the Tikkun of the Mitzvah is Vuhu Valakayin. 
that he has to realize that those staffs that he's, that he's been using his whole life of trying to schlep himself to get to a better place, put those in the Aaron. The Aaron is carrying you. It's not as... Don't take things so seriously. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's not as it's not as pre- high pressured as uh, as you thought it was. You you could sing a little bit. You could see you could sing a niggin because ultimately life is good, and life is working on itself. And Mashiach is coming, and just enjoy the ride because it's happening anyway. You'll see Gula soon. That, that's that's what the Mitzvah needs to hear to have that like that that Shabbos sticking niggin. You know. The einig of Shabbos, that's the, the, the noyim of Shabbos, the pleasantness of Shabbos, is that, is, is that revelation that, that underneath the surface of things, it's still Gan Eden. It's still Gan Eden. And just as Adam and Chava were allowed to remain in Gan Eden on Shabbos, so we're escorted back into Gan Eden on Shabbos. That's what Shabbos is. So Hashem should help us. We shouldn't fall into that mistake of the Metzor. It's a, it's a big Nisayan. Because it's, it's one of those things that, that being a from a Yid, obviously is, you know, we're, we're fans of being from Yidin, right? Obviously. But we have to always be cautious that that sense of responsibility and that sense of, um, of trying to find what's broken in order to fix it, right? Which is good. It's kvaldik. That comes with being a serious from Yid. We have to also make sure to remember that that shouldn't create a negativity within ourselves of thinking, well, everything is broken and everything is in chaos, and, uh, and ultimately it's just uh, an effort and futility to try to make myself a big tzaddik, because I know how far I am from that. The, t- the mitzor, we have to make sure not to become mitzoroyim. A person has to remember that it's not a true, it's a, it's a hard, it's a long journey. The Aran has to get to a very far place, but you should know the Aran is carrying you. And, the, 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 and that, that weight and that heaviness of, of, of that feeling of like, I am the one responsible to make sure I get the R into that final destination, that's a heavy burden to bear. We have to realize that that's not necessarily on us. The Rabbani Shalom is going to get us there. Ganeidin is there. It's just a matter of time until the Ganeidin reveals itself of Basi Lagani. And we're here for the journey. We're doing the best we can to hold on to those staffs as we're being schlepped in the sky to the, get to that place. Hashem should help us. We should be to, 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 to take that achrais as a, as a from Yid, as from Yid, and to become the tzaddik, and that we know we can and will become. But without that, that uh, negativity and that burden that, that Chas Hashem might weigh us down in that journey itself. Shakaya. 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 Shakaya